Okay, so let's start, I think. And so last, uh, we had seen about data types. We have seen the primitive types. Fine. Uh, we have seen the reference data types. Fine. Uh, for reference data types, it is mainly the arrays which we have gone through. And the other types like the classes, interfaces, enums and those things we have not yet touched, right? But yes, we just got a very good quick overview of what they are. Okay, so now let us proceed with another important thing like you know you have uh, for any language the most important thing is data types and for data types what are the operators. Right. What kind of operations can be done and in the language what all different kinds of statements are supported. Fine. So, let us start with the operators available. Okay. Fine. So, we look at operators. Fine. So, we will be looking at operators and statements. Let us see this. Okay. So, for operators, what all operators are available? We have various categories of operators and there are various categories of operators. Yeah. We have yeah, starting with arithmetic. So, let us start with yes, arithmetic operators. And most of the things are anyway similar to C. And but we will be, uh, so where we know uh, things are exactly like C, we may not spend much time there. Fine. Okay, so, we will go over it quickly. So, arithmetic operators, yes, which are the arithmetic operators? Fine. So, these are uh, binary operators for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division and this is for modulus. Okay, these are the binary operators for arithmetic. Okay, few things here. Uh, even before I go into all the details here of arithmetic operators, something about the types, fine. About mainly the primitive types, and that too, the numeric types. Because arithmetic operators they apply on numeric types. So before we go into those operators, fine. There's something to be seen about the numeric types and in numeric types okay we should always remember the super type subtype relationships and even that's useful for assignment you, know? you can't assign a byte into a you can assign byte into an int but int can't be assigned into a byte right so it's like super type subtype relationships fine the relationship for numeric types goes like this we got double as a super type for all the numeric types and that is the biggest of all of them. Fine. Next to double will be subtype is float, subtype of float will be long, subtype of long is int. Yeah. Fine. And then the subtype for int one is short and other side is the care okay short has a further subtype called and so remember this hierarchy okay yeah it's not numeric we are looking at numeric super type subtype relationships between the numeric types So, care could be assigned to an int, right? Care could be assigned to an int also. Fine. Assignment wise, smaller ones can be assigned to the bigger ones. Fine. Which is smaller, which is bigger type. Fine. That is a kind of relationship here. Okay. When we do an assignment, see each one has a size, right? So, now we are looking at these whole numbers. Fine. These are all whole numbers, long and everything below that.
Okay, now fine, relating it to the arithmetics. Let us say this. Fine, one thing as far as arithmetic and most of the operators which we are talking about, as far as these operators are concerned, the operators had been defined wherever it is for numeric types, they are available only for four types. They are in four forms. And they may be available for floating point type as well as whole numbers. If it is available for floating point types, it is float and double. If it is available for whole numbers, it is available only for int and long. There is nothing for this. Okay. And basic thing is like this. But yes, you can still use them. You can still be using short, care or byte in all of your arithmetic. So, whenever we use anything which is smaller than an int, it will have to be converted into an int and it will convert it into an int. We do not have to do anything for that and it automatically gets converted to an int. So, it is like if I consider any of those operators, right? Uh, let us consider two operands A and B. Okay, We have two op uh, find operands A and B for our operator A is a and some operator may be addition. So, let me just say operator and B fine any of the arithmetic binary arithmetic operators fine. The type of the expression this is an expression the data type for that expression what is it what is it going to be is it going to be so it is going to be the type of A or B which one depending on whichever is bigger fine we understand from this which is bigger which is smaller fine but one thing it cannot be less than a int if type for a let us say is byte type for b is short then what will happen it will be for int int minimum int less than int no Fine. So, arithmetic which is done is between int and int. Okay, Int and int. Oh, this is smaller than int, convert to int. This is smaller than int, convert to int. Anything smaller than int gets converted to a int. And then, yes, it is int and int. If one is a float, other is a int. Which is bigger? Float. Second one will be converted to a float and it will be the arithmetic of two float. So, arithmetic is defined only for fine double with double, float with float, long with long and int with int. Fine. See, this is like uh, if you go through the assembly for Java, it is a virtual machine, right? So, there are those operands, those opcodes are there, you will find there are only four. The four forms of add, the four forms of multiply. Okay. And they are defined for 32 bit or 64 bit. Yeah? Fine. So, that way fine we understand now, we understand the meanings of all of them. Uh, just one point was about, uh, because what differs from C probably is here, right? the modulus is available in C only for the whole numbers. And as far as Java is concerned, it is available even for floating point. Okay. And this works even for floating point. Okay. For example, if someone says uh, 7.5 modulus 2.3, yeah, what is going to be the answer? Modulus means remainder. So, make multiples of 2.3, fine, it will be 2.3 into 2 will come out to be, okay, uh, into 3 is 6.9 and so the remainder is 0 0.6, fine. So, this answer would be, this is 0 0.6, the type is double anyway, this is double and double, fine. Okay. See, I was talking about conversions, right? Now, as far as conversions is concerned, just a small look at what 
how conversion happens okay the conversion which is happening here will always normally be from smaller type to a bigger type that conversion happens automatically and this conversion we call it as a widening conversion so in java we have something called widening conversion conversion of a smaller type to a bigger type narrowing conversion is also happening but for that we use casting with casting you can achieve narrowing conversion fine narrowing conversion means conversion from a bigger type to a smaller type there is a mixed conversion also when is it happening there are three cases of mixed conversion four rather yeah short and bite to a care or care to a short or a bite and that's a mixed in which case it's first a widening conversion to it and then a narrowing conversion to the target fine okay fine now still let's look at the how widening conversion happens in a small just a small thing so you might have something like this you have some value let's say this is a byte value fine there is some bit pattern here and that has to be converted to a int let's say so a byte getting converted into a int so this is 8 bits and let's say this gets converted to 32 bit value how is the conversion going to be done byte to a int these bits will be copied okay copy these bits okay what about the most significant bits huh zeros is it zeros okay let me give an example now suppose i have a value 10101101 yeah 10101101 what is that as a byte remember byte is a signed data type it's a negative value if i put zeros in front of it what will happen it becomes positive no that should not happen negative should remain negative how is it done now how is the conversion done widening conversion of byte to a int Okay. we are using two's complement when since we are using two's complement it's very simple to have a widening conversion okay whatever is your signed bit that is the one which gets filled here so if it's a negative value fill with ones if it's a positive value fill with zeros you'll have the same value and that's how two's complement is okay Fine. So widening conversion here is fill with the signed bit. Okay. Fine. Only one case where it would not fill with the signed bit is if you are converting from care type. If you are converting from care type to any type. it won't fill with the sign but care to a int or care to a long it will fill with zeros for care fill with zeros because care is <coughs> care is unsigned type okay care is unsigned type others are signed types and clear what is widening conversion how narrowing conversion is done if any time narrowing conversion is required how will it be done for the whole numbers just chop off the most significant bits fine take only the least significant bits narrowing conversion okay fine another conversion would be taking place between floating point type and the whole numbers fine suppose i have to convert now a narrowing conversion i'm talking about a narrowing conversion 
uh, where it involves I have a value of 7.9 and I do a narrowing conversion to an int. What will be the value? 7. Fine. Fine. It, uh, we call it as rounding towards 0. Fine. Round towards 0. Okay. So, if it is minus 7.9, okay, it moves. So, towards 0, it is minus 7. Okay. And so clear on this conversion part? In the same way, I think uh, when we have uh, conversion from, yeah, we have understood that conversion from long to a float or long to a double, you may lose precision. Then you may, exact value may not be repeated. When that is possible and when it is larger value, that problem is more. Okay, next is fine. So, arithmetic operators fine addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, conversion, some of the things we know now fine. We know about widening conversion, narrowing conversion, mixed conversion fine, which is for numeric types only, applicable only to those types. Okay. Fine. So, let us move towards the next category after arithmetic. We have which one? Assignment. Assignment. Okay, assignment we can take later. We have the comparison. The, uh, comparison, let us call it as comparison. Which are the comparison operators? Okay. So, we make a comparison by saying greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, fine, double equal to and not equal to. And this we know from C language. Okay. One thing those operators, arithmetic operators when you are looking at, they are available for? numerics okay uh, okay one more point and uh, before i go into those comparison i'll have to ch i'll take just one more operator okay it's not an arithmetic operator but one of those symbols is used even for another purpose so let me take this later fine we'll take this later okay. fine we have what we call as string concatenation and that is available with plus. Plus that symbol is also used for string concatenation. And it is there as a string concatenation when either of the two operands is a string. Any one of the two operands if it is a string then it has to be a string concatenation. That operator will be used as string concatenation. And if they are numeric it is an arithmetic operator. Fine. Okay. So, how string concatenation works? Fine. There is one very simple thing to look at. Okay, example of string concatenation, I uh, will have something like this 5 plus 5 plus is 10, that is one expression. Another expression I write as 55 is plus 5 plus 5, yeah, fine. The operation will be done from left to right. Okay. So, what does it do? In the first case, fine, this will result in this is used as arithmetic. Fine. So, it will become something like 10 plus the string is 10. And then this is used as 
a string concatenation fine so that means this becomes resulting in when 1 0 is 10 and that is how it goes fine that first example is okay second case let us see we have a string this one how is that plus used as string, string concatenation fine so it would result in fine the whole thing 55 is plus the string 5 okay and then of course we have that plus 5 still pending fine and then this is a string concatenation fine and then again you will have a string plus a numeric and that would again be converted into a string so ultimately when you should be able to get this yes it will result in 55 is 5 5 okay when clear how this works So, string concatenation means if any one of the operands is a string, your plus will be used as string concatenation, the other operand is converted into a string. Fine, if one operand is a string, the other will be converted into a string. So, another conversion which is available for all data types, applicable to all data types is a string conversion. Everything in Java can be converted into a string. Okay, now let us look at the comparisons. Yeah. What are the comparison operators? Yeah, we had started with this, right? We have the greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, equal to, and not equal to. Okay, now here again looking at the operands, the first four operators are available for all kinds of, uh, only for numeric operands, they are not available for others. The last two are available for all data types. Fine, comparison of equality and not equal to, that is available for all the data types. Okay. But the first four are available only for numeric types, not even for Boolean. You can't say true is less than false or false is less than true. Fine. So you can't have Booleans being compared for less than or greater than. Okay. For string, no, not this way. Strings are classes. String is a class. Fine. So, this is not applicable to, this is applicable only to the numeric types and when you are say, saying less than, greater than, fine, it is only for numeric types, okay, fine, of course, you will need comparison even with objects, fine, you want to have comparison between two objects, fine, so for that there is a different mechanism, fine, this thing is only for numeric. Okay, fine. Now, a few special values. Fine. There are few special cases for comparison. Uh, okay, but before I go for that uh, special values for comparison, another point was I, I mentioned that double equal to and less than equal, or not equal to, they are available for all types. So, we have numeric types, we may have Boolean types. Fine, double equal to, not equal to for Boolean is okay. Fine. But what about the reference type? Fine, let us see. So, you may have reference type, say for example, since you understand objects, right? And now we also understood reference. We are understanding about reference. So, if we have that, so let us consider that we have 
let me consider a class called date. Okay, maybe we have created our own date class. I am not talking about the date which is the standard library from the stand, uh, standard uh, class from our library. And I am not talking about that. Let us just assume that there is some class called date which has internally got three things day, month and year. And it is able to manage day, month and year. Okay. So, now uh, having this, let us say we have two variables d1 and d2. Okay. It would mean we have two references. Okay. Fine. And then someone creates a new date. Someone says, okay, I want to have a new date. Create an object, allocate an object of date. D2 equals allocate another object of date. Okay. So, there is allocation of the object of date. Fine. The point I want here is something like this. What we get as a picture is we have D1, that is one reference. Fine. When I have said new date, it has created a date object. Okay. In this date object, D1 starts referring here. But important, in this date object, let us assume it has the current date. So, uh, what is the date? We will have 12 June 2017. Maybe DDM, uh, fine, day, month and year values are available in the object. Object has nothing else other than these three things. And let us assume there is nothing else in the object of date class other than the day, month and year. Okay. When we create D2, we have another object D2. We have said new, right? to allocate another space. So, this is allocation of another object. When this also, let us assume gets same thing and this is D2 referring here. Okay. D1 refers to one data object, D2 refers to a different data object, but their content are the same the state of both the objects is the same. They have the same day, they have the same month and they have the same year values. Okay. Now, someone makes a comparison and says, oh, D1 double equals D2. What do you think? Is true or false? This is false. Fine. When we compare reference data type using the double equal to, fine, it is going to check whether it is the same object. Is it the same object? It is not about equality. The double equal to sign for reference data type is not about equality. It is about whether it is the same object. Being same is different from saying it is equal. The two dates are equal, the two date objects are equal, right? But they are two different objects. And for reference type, the double equal to operator is only able to say whether it is same object or it is different object. See, for example, if someone had done D2 equals D1, what would have happened? Or D2 would stop referring here, start referring to the same object as what D1 is. And then if someone says D1 double equals D2, oh, that is true okay? because it is the same object whether I use through D1 or I am going through D2, two different variables, but they would mean the same object. Find equality for reference type. Okay. Now let us look at special cases for numeric values. We have floating point data types. Okay. In float and double, there are those three special values which we get when we divide by 0. What are those? Positive infinity, negative infinity, and not a number and we get not a number when you divide by a 0 divide by a 0 is giving us not a number. Okay. 
So if you now for comparison purpose now, right, special case, if I have greater than, right, if I say greater than, then positive infinity is always greater than any other value. Positive infinity is always greater than any other value. Fine. Same way, negative infinity is less than any other value. Fine. So, when we are making comparison less than, greater than, less than, equal to, greater than, equal to and if a positive infinity or a negative infinity is involved, we understand. Fine. Now, the very special case is not a number. Okay. Suppose I have A, okay, I have double A equals, I might have done some things to get a not a number value in A and it is not a number. Okay, fine, A is 0 divided by 0. Okay, if A is taken as 0 divided by 0, which is not a number, now what about someone saying, and I have double B equals 75 maybe. Okay. Now someone says, uh, what about A greater than B? True or false? No. These do not result in error. These operators would not give you an error. Where are the error conditions? The division or a modulus involved with whole numbers. Where? the denominator is going to be a 0. That is an error. And otherwise, in all no other case we have yet got where we will get an error. It is not an error. But what do you think? Is A greater than B? True or false? Okay, I will ask another easier one probably. Fine, looks easier. A equals A, A not equal to A, A is not a number, A double equal to A, true or false? A value being compared with itself, true or false? <laughs> this is false, that is what not a number is. If it is not a number, all comparisons will give you false. All comparisons with not a number will always result in false except for not equal to. Not a number is not equal to everything. Is it greater? No. Is it less? No. Is it equal? No. That is what not a number is. It is not equal. Yes, that is the truth. It is not equal to anything including itself. It is not equal to itself. And so, if there is something like A not equal to A giving us true, understand that A is not a number. <laughs> okay. And so, special value. So, comparison, okay? So, then we think that yeah. suppose we, we get infinity through two different means, mm -hmm. then we compare, then it will be equal. Two, uh, two different uh, means we get infinity. Yeah, you have A as a positive infinity yes. and B is also a positive okay. infinity. No? Yeah, that is okay. Whatever way. A is having value which is positive infinity. You have said 75 divided by 0. B is 100 divided by 0. Okay. They are, what is their? Positive infinity. Fine. So, now what do you want to compare for? Equal to? Yes. Yes, they are both equal. Because they are both positive infinity. Only not a, not a number is a problem case. <laughs> okay. Fine. And they are equal. Okay. 
because once you say positive, however way it may be right derived, but there is a definite way of representing a positive infinity. Fine. A has a particular bit pattern, and that bit pattern is most significant bit is zero, exponent bits are ones, and everything else is zeros. That's your positive infinity. And so, so whichever way you may create it, right? Okay. And so that was about the comparison. Right. Now we can have a look at logical operators. Yeah, one second. Uh, in comparison, fine. In the comparison operators, the result of the expression is always a Boolean type. Right. Result of the expression is always Boolean. Okay. Now for logical operators. The operands have to be Boolean only, and this is available only for Boolean types, and the result is also a Boolean. Okay, fine. So we know the logical operators, and or XOR. Fine. There is one unary operator called. Not, and that's not, and or x or not, and then we again have and or. And so these are all the logical operators. And so these are logical operators, and they will have only. Boolean operands. Fine. One thing here, the first three things, right? Okay. The first three operators are overloaded and available also for numeric. Fine. They are available for numeric. So that will be discussed later. We call it bitwise operators. So they are there even as a Bitwise operator. So that will be disc as a bitwise operator. Then we are talking about numeric operands. Okay. So here we are only talking about Boolean operands. Okay. And or XOR. Right. Those are binary. The last two are also binary. Yeah. One thing. What's different about these two? How does this differ from this? And how does this one differ from this one? Or are the same? You have on and or again, right? They are not same. Okay. So, what's the difference? Okay, I'll have an example. Let's see. Use an example to understand the. Difference. And yeah, I'll just give the name which is used here. Okay, these two operands, these two operators here, they are known as short circuit operators. Okay, these two are categorized as short circuit operators. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about comparison of. So now you, let's see if I have a statement which goes like this. If now before the if I'll have some values. Sorry. So if I have some values like this, I have got uh, int. Let's assume int only int a comma b, and we got a equals to seven, b equals five. Okay, and we have a is seven, b is five, and then someone writes like this. Someone uses the logical operators and says if 
a greater than uh, a less than b. Yeah. Sorry. If a is less than b and it says and a is less than not b, I will say less than I will involve different, I will not involve b here. If a is less than uh, 5, okay, it is just a if a less than 5 and plus plus b is greater than 3. Anyway, it does not matter much. Let me use the parenthesis. Okay, so that is my Boolean expression, and here I might have some code. If we understand that won't be executed. Fine. That anyway is going to be false. Okay, and here I am saying let me print what is the value of A and what is the value of B. And we are interested in looking at the values for A and B. The values for A and B. What do you think is the value for A and what is the value for B? Seven. We have not changed. Yeah. A will be 7, B will be 6. I used double M percent. Huh? Same. When we use a short circuit operator, then here the, what is done is, if the value of the expression can be derived, when, if it can be concluded by using the first op run, it would not evaluate the second op run. That is what the short circuit is. Clear? Fine. So, this the first operand of your logical operator is always evaluated. Okay. Fine. The first operand will be always be evaluated, but this one may or may not be evaluated depending on the value of the first. I am using an end. First one is false. I know it is false. It does not evaluate this. Fine. It would mean Fine. For something, someone who modifies something, whatever expression here, there is some modification happening. Or uh, you know, uh, here I have shown an expression, right? Something like this, where some operation is used. But instead of this, just think, it's a Boolean expression which is needed here. Someone has a method which returns a Boolean value. You might have used a method invocation, which results in a Boolean value, and therefore, you know, depending on the value here this method may or may not be even getting invoked. The result of the expression is the same. <laughs> Fine, clear? Yes. Short circuit operators? And in case of OR, if the first one is true, it will not evaluate the second one. When we use OR operator, first one is true, oh, it means it would be true. I do not have to evaluate the second operand. Okay. And so that is how the short circuit works. Okay, so now coming to the next kind of operators. 
नेक्स्ट कैटेगरी लेट लुक एट द बिट वाइज बिट वाइज एंड शिफ्ट ओके विच आर द बिट वाइज ऑपरेटर शिफ्ट इट इंक्लूड्स शिफ्ट ऑपरेटर्स वी हैव द बिट वाइज एज द एंड और एक्स और बिट वाइज ऑपरेटर्स वी हैव अ यूनरी ऑपरेटर विच इज योर कॉम्प्लीमेंट बिट वाइज वंस कॉम्प्लीमेंट दिस इज वंस कॉम्प्लीमेंट एंड ओके शिफ्ट ऑपरेटर्स आर लेफ्ट शिफ्ट वी हैव द राइट शिफ्ट एंड दिस इज वॉट वी हैव इन सी ओके नाउ फॉर राइट शिफ्ट and something to match what c was doing okay it was providing you know right shift in c works in two ways depending on the kind of operands you have right it adjust according to the type of operands what we have here is we have another operator for it we have this operator called the unsigned right shift this is right shift and this is the unsigned right shift and these would be available for whole numbers not for the floating point type okay and these are for whole numbers not float and double how the how the end operator would work can we understand this fine right? from c language you should be knowing i think right how and or and xor work fine can we understand this or quickly zero and zero is zero okay zero one or one zero is zero only when it is one one we have one that's your end fine same way we have zero zero one one if we have or it would be 0111 if it is xor and this will be 0 and 0 and the n one find this we understand okay now coming to the shift operators slight difference here in shift operators okay shift operator so we let's consider the left shift first fine again it's going to be available for int and long 32 bit or 64 bit right because it's only for whole numbers so only for int and long anything less than int will be converted to a int okay so if i have some value maybe i'm just looking at the bits here okay and i have said i want a left shift 3 when we want a left shift 3 it would mean the resulting value should be okay the most significant 3 bits here would fall off okay and from here whatever was here that comes here fine the least significant 3 bits you will get 0 0 0 this bit comes here and that's how the shifting would take place left shift left shift 3 okay now someone says i want to do a left shift 67 yeah left shift 67 what would happen either 32 bit or 64 bit all zeros that's from c 
<laughs> okay, fine. Here, what is being done is whatever is your value, okay, this value here of the second operand, it will be brought down into a range of 0 to n minus 1, where n is the number of bits for my first operand. My first operand bit values are 32 or 64. How many bits? 32 bit value or a 64 bit value. Fine. So, what you do is to bring it down, take the modulus and put it. So, if someone says left shift 67, it would be same as left shift 3. If it was a 32 bit value and someone says left shift uh, 35, it would be left shift 3. But if it was a 64 bit value, it would be left shift 35. Okay, fine. So, depending on the so, just take the modulus and then derive the value, fine, it has to be between 0 and n minus 1. The shifting will not be done more than that. So, whatever you may have given as the second operand, it is same as modulus, the size. Okay. Left shift. Fine. So, left shift, now this is true for left shift, right shift, or unsigned right shift. For all three, the second operand has to be in the range of 0 to n minus 1. That reduction will be done. Okay. So, this is fine. Now, talking of the right shift, how does right shift work? Okay, I have said right shift 3 suppose, what will be done, yeah, that is correct, yeah, what will be done, this is your sign bit, so what will be done, sign bit is copied 3 times, okay, fine, this goes, sorry, 3, no? uh, yeah, 3 sign bits. This has to go here. This sign bit is going here, right? After the three of them. So, first three bits here will be same as plus the for fourth one also, right? So, four bits will be same. Whatever is zero sign bit. It is not saying zero or one. If it is a positive value, the after right shift it will remain positive, it is a negative value, after right shift it will become, it will remain negative. So, sign does not change because of my right shift. Okay. The least significant 3 bits will fall off and, and then this one will be here. Fine. Okay, fine. Now, what is the unsigned right shift now you can understand? What is the unsigned right shift? In case of unsigned right shift, okay, what you will get here is always zeros. For unsigned right shift, okay, the result has to be zeros. Whatever this may be here, that should be here.
Fine? Clear? So, bitwise. Okay. And let us try to look at more other categories of operators. Yes, what are the other things left out? Hmm? Okay, we have the increment and decrement. These work similar to C, sorry. When post increment, pre -incre increment, post decrement, pre decrement, fine. Just like in C language. Okay, then. Okay, now we have also got the assignment operators plus uh, there are those two unary operators uh, because they do not do arithmetic directly, right? But you have those plus and minus going as a unary operator also. And plus and minus are available also as unary operators. Okay, so now let us talk about assignment and casting. Assignment and casting. Yeah, which are the assignment operators? Yeah, which are the assignment operators? Equal to yes. And you have some operator equal to. OP, I just put OP for operator, plus equal to, minus equal to, star equal to, slash equal to, percent equal to, m percent equal to, and those kind of things, okay. Okay, fine. Now, let us see about assignment. Here again, you know, that for numeric types, the super type subtype relation that has to be seen. Fine. Fine, I will always use super type subtype. Okay. Assignment operators, uh, the first one available only on, for all types. But this one operator equal to depending the operator is available for which type. Okay. Okay, now let us take a simple example of assignment. I have got int a equals 75. Remember 75 is a valid byte value. 75 could have been assigned to a byte also. We will say, oh, what I have in a is a byte value. But yes, what I have used for storing it is a int. And I have got a byte value in my int. And then I have byte b equals a. I have got byte b equals a. What happens? Error. It is a compilation error. You cannot put a bigger thing into a smaller thing. And int cannot be put into a byte. And so that's a error, and how we resolve it by doing a cast. We'll say, okay, let me cast it as a byte. When we cast, it's a narrowing conversion. In this case, it's a narrowing conversion. And that conversion would be done automatically. Fine. By casting, yes, it's saying, okay, I'll do the conversion. And then, okay, so this is one example, simple thing, right? Now, let us consider another thing. So, this is for numeric type. Now, let us consider for reference data type. So, for reference data type, let me consider example as something like this. Uh, I might have a class hierarchy which looks like this. We have a class called vehicle 
and it has two subclasses there is a car and scooter fine these are subclasses of vehicle ok and on similar lines fine int is a super class super type byte is a subtype let us do a similar thing so we put car c equals ok we put a byte value in int let us put a sorry we should have said it's vehicle let me start with vehicle sorry not car, it will be vehicle. So, we have what? Vehicle. Vehicle V equals and someone says, oh, I have a car here. So, someone has created a car object. Okay. Someone allocates a car and assigns it into V and then car C equals V. Is it valid? Car C equals V? No. Fine. Super type, subtype. Exactly similar to what was happening in the primitives. Fine. What is assignable where? Depends on what is super type, what is the subtype. So, this has to be cast into a car. Then you can make an assignment. And so this looks similar. Okay. Now let's look at the place where it differs. So now what happens is something like this. Let's change our things here slightly. Even for this numeric type, suppose instead of a value like 75, which was a valid byte, if I am putting a value 375, it's not a valid byte value. It's not a valid byte value. What happens? What happens here? What happens in the second statement? The value is something wrong. Fine, this value can't be stored, but doesn't give an error. It goes with it, does a narrowing conversion and some bits will be lost. It's a wrong result rather. Okay, what happens here? Suppose what I have got here is not a car, but I have got a scooter. Suppose I created a scooter and say, okay, I want to use it like a car. By having car C equals casting it as a car, V, you are saying, oh, I, I want to start using it like a See, understand the importance of types here. Once I have said V is of type vehicle, it what it really means is fine. What what do we have in vehicle? It's a type, class, or interface, whatever it may be. That has a set of methods, and that has a set of methods which is applicable to that type. A subtype would inherit all those and would add more methods. Okay. So, what it means if I have something called vehicle V, on V I can start using all those methods which are declared for vehicle. V is used like a vehicle only. Fine. Car has its own additional methods. That won't be available to me if I use it as V. V dot something, your own, your, anything special about car, that feature I am not able to use, but I am still able to use that object, but I am still using it like a, only like a vehicle. Okay. Fine. Because V is of type vehicle, if you say V dot something, fine. Of course, what you would always be doing is, you could say, well, let me cast it as a car and start using it like a car. The expression is a car dot use anything available for car. Car, everything for vehicle is already available here. Car is a vehicle, is a relation, inheritance. 
fine. Okay, so now, so that is the importance, okay, one thing, now one thing. So what are we trying to do here in this example? We are saying vehicle V equals new scooter. So what is the object for V? Scooter object. And then we are saying, let me cast it as car. That means I am attempt, I want to attempt to use a scooter like a car. You have actually allocated the object of scooter. And you are saying, oh, I want to use it like a car. Fine, by doing a cast here, this cast is nothing but saying, oh, I would like to use it like a car. What does we have? Scooter. So what happens? What do you think happens here? Huh? It gives an error. You can't, you are not allowed to use a scooter like a car. Scooter cannot be used like a car. See, that's what we have. We, don't, we have references, they are not pointers, they are not addressing any particular object. And they have a particular type of object as the reference. And this is ensured here that you would not be able to use something for which it is not designed. If it was a pointer, it was simply a pointer, I allocate an object of horse cart, have a vehicle or have a car and say, I want to use it like a car. Fine, a bullock cart can be can be used like a car if it was a pointer kind of a thing. Because you can use a different type and say, okay, now it is that type. No, it's not. When someone creates an object, when someone says new, he says, I am creating object of this type. That object cannot be used as any other type. It can be used with its super type. You use it like a vehicle, that anyway is there, I am inheriting, but not as any other type. And you allocate, when, when you allocate an object, clear? Okay, so wrong casting is an error at runtime. It will just say class cast exception. Fine, I can't do the casting here. Wrong casting is a error at runtime for reference time. For primitives, goes ahead with wrong results. And so, assignment, now you understand assignment? Okay. Casting, normally we do a down casting. Sometimes someone may like to do a up casting also. And there are some places where it might be a need and which we will understand a little later. Okay, so now, instead of doing a wrong casting, the new requirement, let me find out what uh, whether it is this or not. If I am trying to cast into something, whether it is this kind or not. Even here with primitives, I don't want that error kind of a thing. Let me detect it. And so here someone might do like this, right? Before I do a casting, someone can put an if statement and say what? If A less than 128, A should be less than 128 and A greater than or equal to minus 128, okay. Only then you do the casting and other things. And this is like saying, oh, whether A is a byte, A has a valid byte or not. And we can check like this. 
So, similar thing for reference type. Fine. Okay, on the same lines, someone can write like this if. So, I am now referring to that other side, right hand side. Okay, that vehicle and car. So, someone has said vehicle V equals, it may be anything which has to be a valid vehicle type. And see this assignment, oh sorry I forgot to mention, this assignment is valid because this is super type and that is a subtype. The scooter is a subtype of vehicle. So, smaller type put into a bigger type. So, that one is valid. Okay. Now, so what do we do? V. We want to check whether V is a car or not. Right? What does V have? Does V have a car? So, it is a V. Instance of that is a keyword in Java, it is an operator. Instance of operator. So, if V instance of car, that is how you will check. If V instance of car, then you do the casting and other things. So, we have this operator called instance of. what is instance of okay to check whether what I am referring to is of a particular type or not okay now Casting and instance of. Yeah. So let us look at casting and the instance of things now. A few things about that. So I will take another example. Now this will be mainly uh, see instance of available for reference type. Okay, that is only for reference type. How do we use S some expression instance of a type, reference type name? Okay, fine. Uh, for example, even this is valid if someone says a, a is some of course some variable instance of and you could even be saying int array like this. We understand arrays are also reference type. That is also valid thing. Okay, fine. So, it is it's, this could be any of the reference type. Clear? The right hand side is name of a reference type. Arrays are reference types. And so, it is a no, it is a good idea basically to have ok. Now, inheritance I have always mentioned inheritance means is a relation right. Many times we go for inheritance for a different reason and it is a very common mistake which is done. We go for inheritance because we think inheritance is there because we do not want to repeat something. Oh, 
that class already has all this functionality. I need that functionality in my class, so I should inherit from there. And that class has already got all the variables I need. Fine. And I want to go for additional variables over and over what that particular class has, and therefore I should go for inheritance. And that is not a good way of deciding inheritance. Inheritance you should decide by using is a relation, the test of is a. Okay. Anyway, what we will do here is we will take an example where we do not have is a relation and we do not have is a relation and let us go ahead and see what exactly happens. Fine. But yes, we are using this example to understand rules about instance of and uh, mainly the instance of and the assignment. It is assignment and instance of now that we are looking at. So, let us consider we have a class called date. What does it have? Day, month, year. I want to have a class called time which would have day, month, year and also additional things are hour, minutes and seconds. And therefore, you might go for a time as a subclass of date. Okay. So, understand that yes, we have date class and time is a subclass of date. Okay. Time inherits from date. Super type is date, subtype is time. Time is having the day month year as well as hour minute second. Fine. Whatever is there in date is also part of time. It has additional things and therefore we go for inheritance. Okay. Fine. And let us now have something like this. We have two variables of type date d1 and d2 and we have variables t1 and t2 of type time. Okay. Let us go for assignments. So, which assignments would be valid, right? d1 equals new, I want to create an object of date, d2 equals new, I want to have an object of time, t1 equals new date and t2 equals new time. Yeah. Which of these are valid? Okay, first one valid, last one valid. Okay. So, impression is second one not valid. Yeah, because we do not have the is a relation. Which is bigger type? Which is smaller type? How is the assignment done? D2 is of type? That expression new time is of type? Time. So, valid or not? <laughs> See, but the first impression you will always get is, See, suppose instead of this, if you know, if you replace date as vehicle and time as car, right? You would not have made the mistake. If you had seen, okay, V2 equals new car, oh, this is fine. Car is a vehicle or you can make that assignment. But when it comes to time, you start thinking. And it is the problem is because of not satisfying the is a relationship. That is a is very natural thing. And that is where the inheritance should be done, fine. And we should not be going for inheritance in such a case. But anyway, this is for our example, <laughs> fine. Just to try to understand the things. Fine. So, I am assuming like this d1, d2 and time t1, t2. Fine. So, this would not be, third one is not valid, right? This is a bigger type. A date is a bigger type. Time is a subtype. You cannot assign date into a, it is a big, 
it can't be fit into a tag. Fine, don't go by the number of instance variables. Just say which is super tag, which is sub tag. And that says that is used for deciding. Fine. Okay. Now let us look at another thing which is about instance of. So now we have these expressions and you have to just tell me which are true and false. And I will just first write all those expressions d1 instance of date d1 instance of time d2 instance of date d2 instance of time t1 instance of date t1 instance of time oh t1 is a uh, t1 assignment was not valid so instead of t1 let me change it to t2 sorry keep it t2 here fine it's t1 instance of t2 instance of date and t2 instance of time that's what we are checking assuming these are the assignments which have been done first I am assuming these assignments have been done and then we are executing those right hand side and then we are evaluating those right hand side expressions, boolean expressions. Okay. Uh, just one more point, uh, let us have something for T1. So instead of doing something like this, okay, since it is not allowed, let me use null here. Okay, I am putting T1 as null, I do not have an object for T1. Okay not referring to anyone. Okay. Now let us see these right hand side expressions which are not true, which are not false. First one, what have I put in D1? A date object, D1 instance of date, that should be true. Okay. D1 instance of time, Okay. Now, to make things simpler, what you do is mentally just replace time with car and date with vehicle and just re-evaluate, re-look. That should give you the answers. <laughs> Clear? So, this one would be false. Next one. D2, what do we have in D2? We have kept the time object in D2. Is it a date? True. Is it time? True. T2 instance of date? True. T2 instance of time? True. Yeah, so for, except for that one, right? Okay, now one more last one. What about T1? instance of time, T1 instance of time, T1 has been set to null, true or false, false, there is no instance, <laughs> T1 does not have an instance, clear, with null it should be instance of will say false. Yes, so rules about assignment and we now understand instance of, fine. If I say, in, see if I say, I am saying instance of a particular type, right, it should be that type or any other subtype is also okay. Other than that, not allowed. And so here, Right. In this case, the second one, what we have in D1? Date object. What is time? Subtype. Sub 
I'm checking. Sorry, I'm checking for time. Fine. What do I have? Is it time or a subtype of time? No. It's a. Fine. This is. Let's say that would be false. In all other cases, fine. I'm checking for date. Time is a date. What we have done by saying time is a subclass of date is we are saying. Time is a date. Now, if you start thinking in that way, then you will get the correct answers. Time is a date. Just think in that way. Time is a kind of date because we are saying time extends from date. So, time is a some kind of a date. Okay. There, the difference you can make out when we use the example of car and vehicle, and when we use the example of Time and date. So anyway, so you should not go for these kind of inheritance. There is a different way of doing solving it. Oh, you are interested in reusing, right? I have already done those things for date, and I want to have for time. I want them to be reused here. There are different ways of doing that, but not. Don't go for inheritance in order to reuse. Inheritance is not meant for reuse. Of course, if I go for inheritance, fine, it reduces my work, but it's not the reason for going for inheritance. Don't use inheritance to reduce your work. Wherever inheritance is there, yes, it will reduce your work, but don't use it for that. Okay, and go for inheritance where you find is a relation. Okay. Hmm. Fine. So this is okay, right? Other operators, Fine. instance of operator now clear? Okay, it's a Boolean expression then. Okay. Now other operators, yeah. What are the other operators we have seen? We might, uh, yeah, we might have missed other things. One operator is a uh, okay. Or even this is an operator. Array operator, index operator, fine. We have this new. That's an operator for allocating. And when we say new, it's an allocation. And we have used new only for array, allocating arrays. And that's what we have seen. But yes, it can be used for allocating objects. Arrays are objects for us. Okay. What else? Yeah, other operators. Yeah, okay, good one. We have that conditional operator, right? Ternary. Conditional operator, what's that? Question mark and colon. Then we have the question mark and colon. Fine. How does it work? Okay. The syntax is a Boolean expression. First, it has to be a Boolean expression. That's our first operand. Okay. So Boolean expression. Question mark. You have some expression one colon and another is expression two. And expression one colon expression two. Okay, okay. What do you think is the result time? What's the result of this expression? Type from data type point of view. What's the type of the expression? It depends on the types for expression one, expression two. If they are same, it's okay. If they are different, then Whichever is the bigger type. Okay, so let's go for some examples here. Okay, again for numeric types, you should understand int. 
smaller than 8 would mean 8. Fine. So, expression 1, expression 2, fine, we understand for numeric type. Okay, one thing I think you already know what this ternary operator is. If this is true, expression 1 is the value. We are not in about talking about the value, how the value is done, but it is about the data type. What is the resulting type? Okay, so, which assignment would become valid fine, from assignment point of view? Okay, this, this entire thing has, an exp, uh, has its own type, it is an expression. Okay, so, now uh, we can use this even with the reference type. This is available for reference type also. Okay, so, you have a Boolean expression question mark. I have an expression of type vehicle colon car. So, what is the type of the expression? Vehicle. So, I can say vehicle V equals this. Fine. What about someone saying question mark scooter colon car? S is the scooter type, C is the car type. What is the type for the expression? Okay, now the thing was before Java 5, it is slightly older, right? Before Java 5, that would give an error, but from Java 5, it's, it became smarter and said, okay, fine. Uh, earlier it was like, oh, these are not assignable to each other. So, we, we cannot say what it is and would give a compilation error. Now, it has, what it has started doing? Looking at the types start looking at their super types. Wherever they have a common super type, the first earliest point where they get a common super type, that is the type for the expression. And so this becomes of type vehicle. We have single inheritance, we understand that now. So that is good, right? <laughs> Now, so now what about this? I have an expression which says question mark. I have date colon vehicle. One is a date type, other is a vehicle type. Java 5 onwards, you do not get errors for th this ternary operator never gives you an error. Not compilation error at least. Okay. No, it has to depend, the type has to depend on these two. Okay. In Java, everything is object. We have actually one base class called object class. Fine. At the top is the object. All other reference types are under object. All reference types are under object. They are subtypes of object. So, any two types they may not be matching anywhere else, but at least at the top we have one that is object. So, that would be an expression of object. And super type object, the base class. Okay. okay, now just one more conversion types for the purpose of conversion and because we saw conversions, widening conversion, 
narrowing conversion, mixed conversion, string conversion also, right? Anything can be converted into a string. And then there is still one more type of a conversion which was introduced from Java 5 onwards, okay? And that is something like this. Suppose after question mark, I have A which is of type int and I have got V which is of type vehicle. One is primitive, other is reference. One is primitive, other is a reference type. Then what do you do? What is the type? So, there is something which is available for primitives, okay. For every primitive type, there is a corresponding reference type which is actually a class. So, for every primitive type, there is a class which we call as a wrapper class. Right? And the conversion which I am talking of here, there are two conversions, they are known as boxing and unboxing conversions. Boxing and unboxing. Boxing and unboxing conversions. And these conversions happen automatically from Java 5 onwards. Okay. The primitive types, white, the short, the int, the long, float, you have the double type, you have the care type and we have the boolean type. And these are the primitive types and corresponding to the primitive types, there is also a class. So, for this we have a class called white, for short we have a class called short and when your when class names then normally start with a capital letter. For int we have a class called integer, for long there is a class called long, float we have a class called float double. For care, we have the class called character. Boolean, yes, there is a class called Boolean. Okay. Fine. These wrapper classes are nothing but they are classes which hold one value of the primitive type. It is just one wrapper. When an object in which there is one value which is of the corresponding primitive type. So, from primitive to class or from that wrapper class to the primitive, that conversion happens, most of the cases it will happen automatically. Fine. So, you can understand what would happen if someone says A colon V that A, if it is an int, will be getting converted to integer and then it will see, it will become object, expression would be object. See? Yeah, boxing, unboxing, conversion, boxing conversion means conversion of a private to, to, to the corresponding wrapper, unboxing is conversion of wrapper to its primitive. Okay. Uh, this conversion, if some places it is not automatically achieved, can be done even with a cast. So, if you got an int type, you can do a casting into an integer. Okay. And normally it will be required there. Fine. 
See another thing, you know, if I have a primitive type and a reference type, so if I have integer, let's say integer is x, int is a. Okay, let's me assume like this, x and a are there. Okay, now if someone says a plus x, what will it be? not allowed fine oh a that addition is allowed only for primitive it's not allowed for a reference it's allowed if it was a string on the other side not for arithmetic fine here what will be done then unboxing would be done a would be converted to the int type from integer to int type and then the addition, so this expression is a int expression. Fine. But if someone is putting it like this, see one thing, the expression here is a int expression. But if then someone says, I have integer, okay, y equals this, then this expression is int but it, that again gets converted to integer so that it can be assigned to y happens automatically fine so automatic conversion wherever required it is doing where a int is required if you have used an integer i understand here int would be valid i'll use i'll do the unboxing here a integer is required but you got a int i'll do the boxing conversion but not all the places this may be automatically done and for example there are some because it is a class integer is a class there is some method available which I can do y dot some method right y dot method is okay but if someone says uh, a dot method a dot method on primitive if I say dot something that would be a compilation error so in such case what you can always do is uh, let me do a casting and then dot something that can be done you will have to use casting to do a boxing conversion so you may use cast for achieving boxing conversions in case you are interested in working some method on it. Clear? And so these are some operators, then we have more operators, okay, there will be more operators like this. Uh, Okay, I think we will be continuing tomorrow, but yeah, uh, let me just put the one which we may start with tomorrow. We have, uh, okay, we do not have, what are the things we do not have? Some operators which we do not have. Do not look at it from symbol point of view, the meaning. We do not have pointers here. So, what are the operators? M percent for getting the address of? star again and plus the pointer operator accessing a fine we do have the dot operator to access a member of something but this one is not there okay now java 8 has this one being used for a different reason it's not the pointer operator but it is basically we have something called the lambda expressions so this is a lambda operator Okay, fine. I will just only be able to give a very brief understanding of lambda and we can tomorrow we can start with that brief understanding of lambda, fine. Okay, fine. So, we will continue tomorrow. Fine. You know, if you have any questions till this point. So, we did not use any big device of Bitwise, uh, uh, 
Okay. We didn't use. Acha, you haven't used. Yeah. How the use in program? Use okay. If you have, like no, if you do some low level uh, uh, some things at lower level, fine. Then you may be using it. You should actually be knowing bitwise. Fine. Uh, okay. What about that big end in little Indian conversion? How will you do? And you use that, you do ending, masking, shifting and masking and that is how you will be achieving bitwise, uh, I mean conversion from big Indian to little Indian, little Indian to big Indian. So like this, there are other requirements. But yeah, you should be programming at that level. And if you have your requirements which are at that level, yes, you will need them. Fine. Okay, sure.